If you look at the top of the Bundesliga table as we enter April 2022, it has a familiar feel to it. 31-time German champions Bayern are strong favourites for a 10th consecutive title, a European top 5 league record, closely followed by perennial bridesmaids Borussia Dortmund, then Leverkusen and Leipzig. But glance further down and the situation is far more interesting. With last season's Champions League last 16 surprise package Gladbach languishing in mid-table, and this year's UCL flops Wolfsburg in 13th. But more shocking yet is the fact that Hertha Berlin, despite their enormous 74,000-seater stadium and bountiful resources, have still failed to get it right, and occupy the relegation playoff place at the time of writing. Hertha Berlin's story is one of squandered opportunities, bizarre appointments and questionable business practices, with a plane crash thrown in. Welcome back to EFD Explained, this is what is going wrong at Hertha Berlin. Before we break down what has happened behind the scenes in the build-up to this potential relegation, it's worth quickly explaining the bare facts. Hertha have won 7 of their 27 Bundesliga games so far this season, with only one side Greuther Firth, who incidentally beat them in mid-February, having lost more than their 15 games. From their last 10 league games, which have included 4 defeats by at least 3 goals, the old lady have taken 5 points, the second worst record in Europe's top 5 leagues behind Rayo Vallecano. In fact, when you expand that out to the top three leagues in the top five nations in Europe, only nine sides out of a possible 164, including League One strugglers Morecambe and Crewe, have picked up fewer points. As European football expert Andy Brassel wrote in The Guardian, Hertha are lost in a tangle of their own making. This is particularly painful for a club that has consistently failed to rid itself of mid-table mediocrity. In the last 10 years, 10 different managers have come and gone, and yet their highest finish in that period has been 6th in 2016-17. Their manager that season, Pal Dardai, returned for a second spell in January 2021, only to be fired in November and replaced by Taif and Korkot, who had been out of work since 2018 and hadn't lasted more than 10 months in a job since 2015. There was little surprise then when he lasted just 14 games and was replaced last month by Felix Magat returning to a European top 5 league for the first time since 2014. It hasn't always been this way. This club finished above 6th four times in the first 6 years of this century. But since the relative high point of 2016-17, 34 different players have been brought into the club on a permanent basis, and 39 have left. That is 16 more players coming in than at Bayern, and 18 more departures than the champions throughout that period. The only thing consistent about Hertha Berlin is their inability to qualify for the Champions League, with Berlin being the only major capital in the top six European nations to have never had a representative in Europe's premier competition. In 2019, one man set out with the stated aim to break that cycle, Lars Windhorst. Although there have always been tales told by its own fans about Hertha being cursed, Ever since the club were relegated in 1963 after their corrupt treasurer Gunter Herzog printed tickets and hid them in caskets before being found out, despite the multiple false dawns since, most Hertha fans believed their luck had finally changed in 2019. That was the year a well-known German investment guru Lars Windhorst used his holding company Tenor to acquire a 49% share of Hertha at a cost of €224 million. Euros. Windhorst has an impressive backstory. Co-founder of a computing company at 16, which at the end of its first year employed over 80 people, he was quickly billed as a wunderkid, even accompanying the German Chancellor on business trips to South Asia. However, he was far from perfect, with some of the investments he recommended there being affected by the Asian financial crisis of 1997 and making big moves into internet enterprises before the dot-com bubble burst. 13 years ago, he filed for bankruptcy for the second time and was found guilty of embezzling €900,000 a year later. But predictably for a man that survived a plane crash in 2007 that sadly claimed the life of the pilot, Vintors has staying power. What would Vintors want with Hertha though? Well, as economist Christoph Brauer told ESPN, the dominant investor model in European football does not aim for financial yield but so-called social yield. This is basically the soft power and influence gained from owning a prestigious, well-talked-about institution such as a football club, which the Saudi PIF and prior to that people like Roman Abramovich have sought and secured. It was clear that a man like Lars Vintors was not going to come quietly. As soon as he arrived, Vintors labelled Hertha in a tactical PR-friendly move a big city club and managed to secure a big name as his football advisor, none other than former German, US and bar manager Jurgen Klinsmann. Known as an excellent motivator but someone who Philipp Lahm labelled as a failure during his time at Bayern Munich, because the players were forced to organise their own tactics due to his lack of instruction, he seemed like an odd choice for a club with plenty of optimism but very little direction. 
Could that be solved by money? Well, Vindhorst was certainly going to try. By November 2019, Vindhorst had appointed Klinsmann as manager and paid his first instalment of 220 million, which was later up by a further 150 million euros, allowing the club to pay off its debt and start making some serious moves in the market, with Klinsmann acting as its promoter. As Konstantin Ekner wrote for ESPN, this was best exemplified with the case of Christoph Piontek, who was under contract at Milan but in search of a new club after a less than successful move from Genoa. Ekner explained, When he and his agent were first approached by Hertha, they did not think much of what they had heard. One phone call with Klinsmann later, they'd heard enough and were convinced Hertha were the perfect choice. Piontek arrived as part of an 82 million euro winter spending spree that also saw highly rated youngsters Mateus Cunha and Santiago Escasaba arrive from Leipzig and Stuttgart respectively, and a deal agreed for Leon midfielder Lucas Tusa set up for the summer. Whilst Cunha's goals and in industry proved absolutely crucial to Hertha's survival in 2020 and 2021, before he left for a permanent spot on Atletico Madrid's bench, Piontek was nothing short of a disaster. Their second most costly signing of all time was handed the number 7 shirt and an unspecified long-term contract. But after just 13 goals and 56 appearances, the pole known as the Gunslinger left for Fiorentina on loan with his pistols firmly muzzled. Think that backfired? But it's not a touch on Klinsmann. He lasted just 10 weeks which featured just 3 wins from his 9 league games in charge, which would move Hertha from 15th, level on points with the relegation playoff place, to 14th and 6 points off the drop. Not a complete disaster, but for a man who replaced Antti Kovic, a man who had been involved with Hertha for over 20 years, to last just 9 games before being replaced by Kovic was a major disappointment. Klinsmann initially claimed he'd been unhappy with his restricted role of coach at the club, and wanted the sort of all-powerful managerial role we have here in England. But two weeks later it turned embarrassing when one of Germany's most famous football faces did a Facebook Live and complained about a lack of backing, despite having spent 75 million euros on new players. Of course not everything can be blamed on one owner, one failed manager and one striker, but it's fair to say that the club's regression has been stark. Last summer Matthias Cunha was followed out the door by Jean Cordoba, who was their joint top scorer last season with seven, remarkably a tally that hasn't been topped in either of the last two completed campaigns. The club is now following the direction set by sporting director Freddy Bobic, who made his name overseeing Stuttgart's ascent to the Europa League in the early 2010s and backed that up by securing Eintracht Frankfurt's first title in 30 years with the DFB Pokal win over Bayern in 2018. Bobic is having to increasingly battle some mixed messages from Windhorst, however, who according to the aforementioned Eckner has at times put the recent failures on the board and other times expressed his unbroken trust in the decision makers. He's even raised eyebrows at other clubs by suggesting that not all German sides should be forced to obey their famous 50 plus 1 ownership structure. Hertha's immediate financial future isn't under threat. After all, they've only made a net loss of just over 60 million euros since 2019. But the fact that their top scorer this season, Stefan Jovetic, is 32, and that of their seven signings of at least 10 million euros since 2018 19, only two remain, means that even if they do survive this season, their long term prospects don't look good. Vindels claims that he isn't going anywhere, promising that he will provide means, be it in six months, a year or two, but the fans are struggling to commit to a side playing such sterile football. Their average attendance this year, albeit in another COVID-affected season, has been just over 14,000 fans per game, meaning that 60,000 seats have remained empty on a weekly basis. To compare matters, they've had to watch rivals Union Berlin, who hail from former East Berlin, who are as idealistically as different as any two city teams in Europe, not only reach the Bundesliga but surpass them. After finishing level on points with Union in 2019-20, during their rivals' first ever Bundesliga season, the Arm ones finished an enormous 15 ahead in 2021 and are already 12 in front this term, having gone unbeaten through their last three meetings. The lessons from Hertha's demise are simple. Find an identity off the pitch and the results will come on it. Chopping and changing players and managers only creates a confused philosophy, poor work ethic and a downward spiral. Hertha may survive this season, but unless Vintors and Bobic find a way to improve a side that has conceded over 60 league goals already, giving it the sixth worst goal difference in Europe's top five leagues, They'll be joining sleeping giants like Hamburg, Schalke and Werder Bremen in the second division before too long. So guys, that was our explained on what on earth is going wrong at Hertha Berlin. We went a little bit niche with our topic this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The script was written by myself, but the edit was done by George Wright. So please give him a lot of credit in the comment section and I'll catch you next time.